Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. So, maybe there's an implicit agreement at f- a foot, and that changes the expectations on QE2. It also means that the, U- the euro loses a prop to a degree um, on its currency from China FX reserve allocation. If China agrees to start letting its currency appreciate and reallocating those reserves domestically, it's not going to have that money there to buy European bonds and push up the euro. So it tends to, the euro tends to lose a prop there, and that's why our target is if this policy uh, is afoot, at least from a from a, a corrective standpoint and a very good correction to play, um, the euro is on the top of our list, and I'll get to that in just a second. Commodity currencies could take a premium hit. There's an agreement in play, um, just less liquidity be, being thrown out there by the U.S. Um, and China green here, which means this implicit agreement would also lead to a slowdown in China's GDP. Again, not a stop and not a major dislocation, as Japan experienced, at least that's what they hope. Um, it means that the commodity currencies would probably take a, take a hit, and they'd wash out some of that premium in there to a large degree against the U.S. dollar. But ultimately, we think, um, again, if this is in play, and this is a stretch, uh, I have to admit this is a story that was a bit of a stretch, and it's becoming less of a stretch as we, wa- as we watch the events pile up. Um, but if, if this story does start to play out, we think the commodities um, currencies turn over against the U.S. dollar, but from a corrective standpoint, whereas the euro could be pushed back into its longer-term bear trend. British pound really is, is at the mercy of growth expectations, which are in trouble in a very big way now. Um, the cut um, by the <clears throat> by the European, um, excuse me, by the U.K. government, in one sense, you have to really say, you know, give them major kudos for really just grabbing the bulls by the horn and making such a massive cut, um, you know, of government expenditures. Um, but in the near term, because of the other austerity measures, to, you know, and the, just the global demand not being there, the growth prospects may be so bad um, for the British pound, although they have a, had a decent GDP number reported today. But going forward, if, if they do have, um, you know, the growth numbers really do look nasty because of the cuts in the austerity, um, we would actually see more quantitative easing from the Bank of England, which ultimately would hit the, you know, the British pound. We're not sure we're there yet, but I think that the, the story is there for, for all to see. So we're just watching the, the British the growth expectations going forward and how they play out against reality. Pound jumped today on better than expected growth expectation. Trade war scenario, the, cha- the game just changes in a big way, um, and we get a massive flood probably back into the U.S. Um, as a hiding place. Um, and the dollar gets a major risk bid. Technically, where are we? Um, this is the all-time low in the U.S. dollar. This is the U.S. dollar index, all-time low. This was that big retracement where it bottomed um, in December 2009 and rallied up. Now we came pulled back again right on this trend line, interestingly. Um, the sentiment numbers here look very much like they look here against the U.S. dollar in terms of bull bears, uh, almost exactly. And just ugly, ugly sentiment, thinking the U.S. dollar is going to fall off the cliff again. Also, when we look at this, um, when we do our wave analysis, we're looking at this as a, you know, as a wave one up, really, is what we're, we're, we're looking um, as this move way of, wave, of a broader wave three, and we're looking at this as a corrective wave two. We're looking at this as an A and a B and a C. And if you look at it from an Elliott standpoint, A, B, C correction, it meets it very well. Um, on a zigzag correction for Elliott, um, and it really was a very uh, decent point in which it, it should have turned from a time standpoint and from a distance standpoint, and it, and it turned pretty much on Q on that trend line. So that's another reason from a technical standpoint we think this background story makes some sense. The idea that um, any change in QE2 expectations will probably hit the, as- the risk asset markets, meaning the you know, so much of this premium has been bid into the risky assets and stock prices. Um, the question obviously being asked is how much is in the price. We think a lot of this uh, QE2 is in the price. So if the expectations change and they pull back on it, um, we would expect the Dow Jones Industrial Average S&P to turn over on all that risky asset markets measured by stocks to start to turn over. 
This is a chart showing the U.S. dollar index in black here, as I just showed you before. And the red line is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And you can see how highly correlated the, these are, which is a direct reflection of using the dollar to pump up risky asset classes. And interestingly, we had <clears throat> hoped um, that after the credit crunch and interest rates started to normalize, we would start, start to see these tight correlations go away uh, in all these markets around the world. But the fact is, interest rates have not normalized. Everybody's pumping in, pumping liquidity out there. So these assets, so these correlations across these asset classes um, are tight as tight as they've ever been. Um, St Steve and I have been discussing some of this stuff offline. Steve's been sending some really nice charts showing these cor how tight these correlations are um, from a, on the numbers standpoint. But you can see how tight this correlation is um, in the U.S. dollar and the stock market. So if this is in play, lower expectations, too much already priced in, we would expect some type of correction in the stock market, and that, of course, would lead to a correction higher uh, in the U.S. dollar. Over here, it's the same chart. On the right is the same chart. On the left, we just added the green is the Australian dollar. So you can see how tightly the Australian dollar, uh, as a as a risk aversion, um, excuse me, risk appetite currency, moves with risk assets. Assets, how tightly it moves uh, with the S and P 500, Dow Jones Industrials in this case, and of course uh, the U.S. dollar here. That's why we said if we see some type of turnover on this move, we would expect it to hit the commodity currencies, the Australian dollar, the hardest because it's gone up the most um, of the major commodity currencies. Um, we expect a hit there, at least a premium uh, fall back. But if, if some growth materializes out there, um, we would expect them to stabilize and trade fine going forward. One of the things we've also been watching, again, from a correlation standpoint, um, is the 10-year notes. And the 10-year note, <clears throat> as you know, this is the 10-year note futures. Or this is, these are bond prices, um, which are inverse of yields. So as this goes up in value, yields go down. So all this QE2 expectations of more money in the market leads to buy-in of bonds. Well, we finally saw a break today in a big way uh, of this daily uptrend going back from all the way back to April um, in the 10-year note. And I direct your attention to this next chart, which shows 10-year notes compared to the S&P 500, compared to the euro. And this is a shorter-term chart on a four-hour basis. The 10-year notes are the black line. Uh, the green line is the euro, and the red line is the S&P 500. You see how tightly correlated these are even on a short-term basis. We started to get a little divergence on this first box here that we pointed out. Um, it's some of our, our clients, when we, when we saw that right away, we saw this divergence here. These guys still holding up. And sure enough, they both came back to it again. Agree um, with the 10-year note leading. 10-year um, notes rally up again. These guys taken off again. Then another divergence started, and a bigger divergence today, as you can see from this breakdown on the dailies. Um, a bigger divergence has developed here, and sure enough, the euro started to turn over following the 10-year notes. Um, but the market still held up today pretty well. So this is a, this is another thing on the way we use the intermarket analysis um, um, to help. You know, just to help build our story um, technically, um, which is kind of, in our markets, kind of a mix of technical and fundamentals. Oh, and that chart in there again. Euro. Um, the, the high may be in the bag in the euro here. You know, we, we've looked at this move as a corrective move. We haven't believed um, that, that that there's been a whole lot of changes fundamentally to the to the core problem structural problems in Europe even though we've we've seen some obviously some uh, some of the risk spreads um, come in a bit and some concerns of sovereign default you know come go away but we're still we've we're looking at this as an a b c correction uh, in the euro and it can it, it meets these pretty well obviously if we break above a new high back here 141 New York could quickly go to the you know, 145 level. Um, but we were looking at this as a, um, and in this latest move, as the first break, a test, and now a break again. Um, and we have a target of 133 um, for a move down uh, in the euro. Thank you for participating in this week's session. Please join us again next week. Get trading ideas, exchange rates, webinars, news, and commentary. Visit www.fxoptions.com. ISE FX options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts. These exchange-listed securities are cash-settled in U.S. dollars and have a European-style exercise.